the UK, the British government is taking steps to crack down on rogue firms targeting children with free vape samples. It comes as recent NHS figures for 2021 show that 9% of 11 to 15 year olds use e-cigarettes up from 6% in 2018. In 2015, Juul Labs launched as a startup with a promise to use innovation to help smokers quit smoking permanently. We started this project with the firm belief that innovation could address all of the problems associated with smoking. The company's marketing portrayed Juul as a possible public health ally. However, doubts emerged soon after Juul's launch. Regarding their target audience, Juul's promotions seemed to be geared toward young audiences. Advertisements showed young, attractive models without any nicotine or health warnings, which could normalize vaping and promote it as a cool habit for teenage viewers. Its social media content aimed to glamorize the Juul lifestyle and promote a sense of freedom and fun, appearing on networks popular among kids. Juul's popularity became so immense that it gave rise to a new verb, juuling. 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 It just became like more and more popular and everyone would just like huddle around in the bathrooms. Just everyone had it all at once. Despite claiming that Juul only intended to target existing adult smokers, statistical data showed that Juul's marketing efforts had primarily recruited new nicotine users from age groups too young to legally purchase cigarettes. Within just two short years, Juul hooked millions of American teenagers into long-term nicotine dependency through its products Kids are going to the bathroom, smoking it in stalls. Next thing you know, you're hooked like that, and you can't stop. The question remains, was Juul truly committed to public health, as they claimed? Or did ulterior motives guide their switch campaign behind closed doors? E-cigarettes were first introduced in the mid-2000s as a potential alternative to smoking. The concept, originally developed in China, quickly gained popularity worldwide with various devices being sold under different standards. In the United States, regulations for e-cigarettes have not kept up with their increasing popularity over the last decade. As a result, companies have been able to aggressively market their products through various channels, from gas station ads to celebrity endorsements. Manufacturers have been able to flood the market with their e-cigarette products without any established policies in place. They let this industry be unregulated for years. Unfortunately, the lack of awareness regarding the long-term health impacts of e-cigarettes has only made the regulatory void worse. Approximately 2 million American children may have started vaping. And despite missing this deadline by two years, the Food and Drug Administration remains nowhere close to meeting the legal mandate to regulate these addictive e-cigarettes. Instead, tens of thousands of dangerous, Highly addictive e-cigarettes have legally shown up on store shelves without FDA review or approval. Initially, the FDA had taken a hands-off approach, hesitant to regulate businesses without sufficient research. However, critics called out the oversight gaps, highlighting how public health was being put second to commercial profits. You know, this, this is just handing e-cigarettes to young adults. We don't know if they have a smoking history. We don't know if they're trying to stop tobacco use. And I mean, the motivation on the part of the company has to be that they want to get more people addicted to nicotine. As smoking rates decreased, Big Tobacco saw an opportunity to shift its customers to vaping. However, regulators soon became concerned about their uncontrolled outreach tactics particularly since minors were still the primary focus for tobacco companies. By 2015, there were over 7,000 e-liquid flavors available, catering to users' preferences rather than their desire to quit smoking. Due to the lack of flavor and youth targeting restrictions, the market became a free-for-all for profiting from nicotine addiction without any accountability. This environment allowed Juul to discreetly target the lucrative young demographic by exploiting every loophole. They used the unregulated environment to engineer a takeover of the vaping industry before anyone could react. Adam Bowen and James Monsies, who were once smokers, identified an opportunity to introduce a safer option to traditional cigarettes through innovative design. 38 million Americans that still smoke. There are a billion people who still smoke globally, but 70% of those people want to quit. In 2015, they launched their revolutionary concept for a next-generation e-cigarette through their startup, Juul Labs, which was incubated within PAX. Juul's early prototypes had several covert elements incorporated into their design for discrete use. 
Their small and streamlined USB-like shape was perfect for concealment, and their sleek aesthetic was a significant departure from bulkier forerunners, however. What truly differentiated Juul from earlier e-cigarettes was its secret formula, which utilized nicotine salts. By using this smoother formula at unprecedented high levels of up to 5%, Juul created a nicotine punch that exceeded the 1-2% to of competitors. So Juul packs a bigger nicotine dose into a much more pleasant hit than most devices on the market. Juul had successfully packed a cigarette matching buzz into its delicate device, and former smokers raved about Juul's best e-cig experience ever in its taste tests. However, these early reviews did not address the potential long-term health impacts of Juul, including whether its potent nicotine could rewire teenage brains or act as a gateway to cigarettes. By mid-2015, Juul was ready for the mainstream market, and they launched a range of colorful pod varieties such as mango, cool cucumber, and creme brulee. Each contained Juul's nicotine salt formula calibrated to doses labeled simply as satisfying. Juul employed a sophisticated marketing strategy to penetrate mass markets, including conducting social media blitzes using the hashtag HashJewelNation to create a trendy image. Influencers were paid to promote Juul's vibrant lifestyle to their followers, often without disclosing sponsorship. Furthermore, Juul strategically placed its ads on TV to increase its brand exposure among casual viewers. They also put up billboards to target commuters and advertised in publications that catered to college campuses to normalize vaping to freshman students. With its buzz growing and availability increasing due to relaxed regulations, Juul had prepared society for its eventual rise. Now, the company is focused on disrupting vaping's gatekeepers, Altria and RJ Reynolds, the reigning giants of the tobacco industry. Can Juul succeed in this fight? In 2017, Juul's dominance in the e-cigarette market became evident. Sales data showed that they controlled over 70% of the multi-billion dollar industry, surpassing their competitors by a large margin, however. The CDC surveys recorded a sharp increase in teenage vaping rates, similar to Juul's ascent. This raised concerns about whether the company's success was intentional or coincidental. Internal documents revealed that Juul had crafted marketing messages that were youthful and flirty, to target the 18 to 24 demographic through parties and festivals, contradicting their public claims that they didn't intend to target young people. Moreover, their patented temperature control system was designed to mimic the sensation of smoking as closely as possible to addict first-time users. Despite raking in billions, Juul continued to deny any youth targeting in their marketing efforts, while evidence suggested otherwise. Regulators began to question whether Juul had deceived them, as their enticing flavors and sleek designs made it appealing to teenagers who couldn't legally purchase other tobacco products. Consequently, many teenagers grappled with the consequences of nicotine addiction, while Juul's true motives remained hidden. This begs the question, had Juul crossed a moral line in pursuit of profit? In 2018, the FDA sent shockwaves across the nation by officially labeling youth e-cigarette use as an epidemic. The FDA calls teen vaping an epidemic. The agency is warning e-cig companies that they will be taken out of the marketplace if efforts aren't made to keep the products out of the hands of teens. They revealed that over 3 million high school students and 1 million middle school students were now regular vapors. This shocking statistic shows an incredible increase of 80% in just one year, indicating that vaping has effectively replaced traditional smoking as the preferred tobacco product among teenagers. With rates twice as high as traditional smoking, a new generation is at a heightened risk of becoming addicted to nicotine. All because of the alluring appeal of candy-like flavors, activists and researchers have argued that Juul's enticing fruity flavors and slick marketing campaigns were distorting perceptions of the risks associated with e-cigarettes. Unfortunately, all these warnings were ignored. In late 2018, Altria, a tobacco company, invested $12.8 billion in Juul, acquiring a 35% stake in the company. This was the biggest investment in the history of e-cigarettes. Altria has expressed its interest in supporting Juul in achieving its objectives by leveraging its vast resources. However, some public health experts are of the view that Altria's investment could be an attempt to regain lost customers and profits by controlling the youth e-cigarette market. All of that muscle Philip Morris has is going to be available to help protect and promote Juul, the e-cigarette which is attracting the most kids. There are concerns that Altria may seek to exploit America's captive teen customer base, which has made Juul the most popular e-cigarette brand 
in schools across the country. This is a jewel. I know it looks like a flash drive, right? So the liquid goes in here, and then they, they smoke it, they vape it. The situation has become more complex since 14 state attorneys general have written to the Federal Trade Commission, seeking clarity on whether the deal violates anti-competitive laws or the 1998 Tobacco Master Settlement Agreement, which was intended to curb marketing to minors. In 2022, the Federal Trade Commission, FTC, filed a legal action to prevent Altria's investment in Juul after four years of the deal. According to the FTC, Juul was prioritizing profits over public health. Juul agreed to pay a significant settlement of $438.5 million to resolve several lawsuits accusing them of targeting teenagers. Furthermore, the introduction of stricter federal rules and state-level bans had a damaging effect on Juul's sales. As of today, Juul is still caught up in legal battles while the FDA considers the possibility of banning its products altogether. Despite being a leading player in the market, Juul now faces an uncertain fate, carrying the burden of its rise through questionable methods that now threaten its very survival. Thank you for taking the time to watch today's video. We value your feedback and would love to hear your thoughts on the topic. Please leave a comment below to share your opinion. And if you enjoyed the video, please give it a thumbs up your support helps us to reach a wider audience with our content. Thank you for watching, and don't forget to check out our other videos here.